Hi and welcome to introduction to analytics. In this class we are first going to talk about what is analytics. There was a street hawker who used to come to my street to sell fruits every day. He used to come at around 10 in the morning and uh, this was a time which suited me and I became a regular customer of his. I used to buy fruits every other day from him. Then one day he stopped showing up on my street. I of course forgot all about the fruit seller till recently when I met him on another street close to my house. I stopped and said hello to him. I asked him why he had stopped coming to my street. He replied, people in your street are not good customers. They haggle a lot. And there are two other fruit carts that come to your street. So there is a lot more competition. Whereas here there is less competition and people haggle less. I can charge a better price. When I asked him how he found this new street, he pointed to the two big SUVs parked near where we were standing and he said, I figured if the cars are bigger, people here will have more money. I was really surprised by what this guy had said. The fruit seller, who is actually a high school dropout, is using sophisticated marketing analytic techniques like customer profiling, demographic segmentation and competitor analysis to make strategic decisions for his business. He has analyzed the behavior of his customers as well as his competitors, identified an underserved niche and established himself as a value provider in the niche. It just shows you that analytics is being used by a lot more people than you think. Most of us are using analytics in some form of the other to make not only business decisions but personal decisions in life as well. So analytics is actually all around us. But when we talk specifically about using analytics in business, analytics often comes with scale. So while this is a commendable achievement on the fruit seller's part, the fact that this is even possible is only because of the size of the business. The fruit seller has one store, which is his cart. He has one market, which is the locality he roams around in and one product that is fruits. This limited scale means that he is able to participate in each transaction, observe the behavior of his customers and even his competitors due to the limited expanse of the market. He is able to pick up the nuances of his customers. For example, he may find that some of his customers often ask for the smaller variety of bananas or that one of his customers is crazy about kiwis. Now he can look at these things and he can uh, make decisions for his business. For example, even though kiwis are not part of his regular assortment, he can start carrying them even if he finds one customer who is willing to buy them. Since he personally interacts with all his customers, he can pick up what they want easily. He can make suitable changes to his assortment as well. Now imagine another retailer, a much larger retailer, someone like Walmart. Walmart has close to 9000 stores their stores carry 10,000 to 100,000 SKUs on an average and they do over 1 million transactions every hour. It's a little harder for Walmart to have the same intimate knowledge about its customers as that street hawker. Yet, this knowledge is crucial for Walmart's success. When Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, started the first store, he had a pretty good premise. He realized that he could drive his revenue by underpricing his competition. He had gained this knowledge by working in another store for some time. Based on his observations, based on his experience during that time, he decided to set his business model on aggressive pricing. His intuition served him well and of course his strategy was a success. But it was a localized strategy based on one person's personal experiences in one particular market dealing with a small set of customers in one geography. It is not possible for Walmart to use this strategy now. If they want to understand even small things about their customers, they have to analyze huge amounts of data. As an example, even to find out a small thing like what is the average size of a transaction in Walmart, one will have to go through 10 million transactions and that is just one day's data. If you want to calculate the average over say the past year, you are looking at 4 billion transactions. Okay, And this is a very simple analysis. Walmart is simply trying to find out all the people that come to my store, what is the average size of their transaction? How much is one person 
spending on an average in my store is it five dollars is it fifty dollars it's a fairly simple analysis but even to do that walmart if they want to base their average on one year's data they have to analyze over four billion transactions compare that with uh, the capacity of microsoft excel you know excel is one of the most popular tools in the world uh, it is one tool that uh, almost everyone uses regardless of whether they are an analyst or not excel in its latest version the 2010 version is capable of handling 1 million rows of data walmart needs to analyze 4 billion transactions or 4000 million rows of data okay so you can see where the problem comes in and this is for a simple analysis if walmart wants to see if there is any relationship between the items it sells now this is a fairly common analytic technique especially popular in retail where a retailer is interested in finding relationships between products for example if a person buys milk they are likely to buy eggs or bread as well because usually when you buy milk you may be looking at products like eggs and bread as well so if you have five products or 10 products it's fairly easy to do that but if we have 10000 products like a typical walmart store then just looking at all the possible pair combinations between these 10000 products we will have to analyze 50 million product pairs okay let's look at the scale again 1 million transactions every hour 9000 stores spread across the world and 10000 to 100000 sku's per store the amount of data that is being generated by walmart nowadays is just enormous no human mind is capable of dealing with so much data and they are not the only ones all businesses nowadays even small and medium size ones generate huge amounts of information or data we need sophisticated tools and statistical algorithms to make sense of this data look at some other examples from the same domain from retail tesco tesco is another retailer known for its customer analytics work they have over 35 million club card customers okay which means they have 35 million people who have subscribed to their loyalty card and every time they make a transaction at tesco all their information is captured in the loyalty database this means that tesco is collecting data on 35 million people shopping at their stores they delivered over 1 billion items in the last year and this is just home delivery the total number of transactions would be much larger moving from uh, retail if we come to telecom airtel one of the largest uh, telecom companies in the world has a subscriber base of 261 million subscribers they handle over 8 billion calls every day so again if you put yourself in airtel shoes for even a simple analysis where you want to find out what is the average duration of a call made on your network you have to look at over 8 billion calls and that's just one day's data okay if we are uh, looking at a year worth of data we are talking about trillions of calls imagine how much data that is imagine how much time it would take to go through that data and analyze that data in any conventional form and not just uh, telecom even in e retailing Amazon one of the largest e retailers in the world can handle over 10 million transactions a day on their busy days Flipkart which is a much newer and younger uh, Indian counterpart uh, is uh, also handling over 10000 transactions a day Visa which is one of the largest credit card issuers in the world handles around 100 million transactions a day with transactions worth over trillion dollars in a year Fico which is another financial services company has a fraud detection program that protects over 2 billion accounts worldwide all of these are examples of businesses that are large and generate enormous amounts of data and data is everywhere google is processing 1 million gigabytes of data every hour on facebook people are sharing 30 billion pieces of content every month Sprint has 2.8 trillion rows of data with it and uh, Google's databases have over 300 billion entries in them so imagine the amount of data that is there when we are confronted with this vast amount of data we can no longer rely on our mind to assimilate all the information and generate insights from it human mind is not designed to deal with so much information this is where analytics comes in 
Analytics allows us to use sophisticated statistical algorithms and leverage computing power to explore, analyze and understand the data, to generate insights from it and to discover hidden patterns that once we understand, we'll be able to make better decisions and run the business better. Analytics can help banks, it can help retailers, telecom companies, healthcare companies, even sports. And this is what as analytics is essentially, you know, it is the use of sophisticated statistical algorithms to explore, analyze and understand the data, generate insights from it, discover hidden patterns and take advantage of these hidden patterns to make better decisions.